Hello everybody. Um, first I want to... Geht's nicht, oder was? the audio is not working so that's why I interrupted for a second. Um, first I just want to show you a bit of our Cinema 4D setup. I built up a pretty basic scene because I wanted to mo do a bit more in Photoshop for this one at least. Um, I'm just describing what we usually do as you can see here we have quite a uh, pretty a big setup already that's when we load in the scene we have all these folders and everything so that we just have to uh, put the 3d model in there and separate all the different assets and stuff that we need and have um, on down here we have also a layer setup where uh, we can then turn off particular parts of the model for this 3D model or for this image, I first like looked at um, I looked at uh, some perspectives before I even built the landscape and the surroundings. So um, I, in the end, decided for the first one you saw. I also had now the setup, light setup for this one. For the background, I just used an argued RGB value here, like blue, because I just wanted to have the reflection on the windows blue, and that's the only part in the image that is reflecting. Um, then I modeled the landscape uh, according to to what I wanted to see or where uh, I wanted it to be. Then I added three different layers or made it in three different layers uh, three different surfaces and displaced them differently uh, one surface is the rocks that come out here i sculpted them a bit later on so that they are more visible where i want them to be more visible and for the sandy thing or the sandy ground um I used also two different um, surfaces so that it doesn't like uh, tile too much. So it's basically the same texture, one's a bit bigger, one's a bit smaller. Um, and then also just displays differently. And later on I uh, just added some grass that you cannot really see here that well in the small preview. And also the rocks are um, are then uh, scattered over the surface for the building. Pretty basic setup as well. Just one texture for all the let's call it plaster or concrete parts, and then the windows have an, an reflective material a glossy material and the windows with normal glass and the railing a bit of a darker material. Um, yeah, so that's basically the setup. I kept it really simple because I wanted to do more of the work in, uh, in Photoshop. As you can see, there are also some small mistakes in the the geometry because of the displacement and sh stuff so I didn't really care about that um, yeah uh, yeah as you can see we use octane that's why we also have here like the uh, pretty fast preview we for this scene I think I used mainly for the textures in the foreground I think and the stones they are from real displacement textures 
Um, and the grass I put in with Forester, that's like plugins we usually use quite a lot. Forester is the plugin we use quite a lot for vegetation. And yeah, real displacement textures are quite nice. Uh, shout out to Christoph Schindler there. Um, yeah, the water, I also didn't care too much about that because I'm probably gonna add some waves and stuff in Photoshop as well. Um, yeah. So I think we can actually now switch to Photoshop or um, if no one else wants to know more about the Cinema 4D setup, I mean I always think like 3D is more easy or like I cannot talk too much about 3D or do too much in 3D because it will either take too long or is anyway like pretty well known. Um, yeah. So I guess I just switched to Photoshop now. Oh no, maybe let's go first to um, to the references I had for this image. I will switch to bridge because I can make a bit of a bigger preview here. This is just some images I uh, searched for on the internet for what I will going to I'm going to use in. Uh in uh, in Photoshop now and for the references I mean as you can see it's like highly related to Bouffil architecture stuff um, for the building and also for the surroundings I want to go for um, then I also have this image by Mir which I really liked and that's why I used the pink color tone and I probably will also try to stick to the colors or like the yeah yeah the colors they used here but we will see that later if we really want to go that way or if I want to go that way yeah we'll just click through the references quite quick I mean it's quite good to have like references for plants and landscape surroundings etc so that's why I just wanted to show you these images here um, yeah when we render what we get out is like uh, these different passes I mean, maybe that's relevant for you to see. I forgot to add the alpha channel, so that's basically just white. I think this is the, yeah, this is ambient light, the AO pass. Uh, I think this is just the raw image or the denoised image, but they look pretty similar. This is the diffuse, direct, diffuse I indirect. Um, yeah, I didn't have light, so the light buses don't exist. The color ID or object ID, uh, that's the color, I uh, the material ID, the object ID, I also didn't set up. That's the opacity filter, which I can now use as the CDEF. It's missing like the windows, but uh, I guess that's not really relevant for now. The post. Um, I think that's one of the reflective layers. Reflection indirect, I think. The opacity filter of um, the refraction, shadows, map, CDEF, and that's now already one. Uh, that's the raw that I already worked with, like the HDR. Um, I usually use the HDR to um, and use it in in uh, in Arion or use the plugin Arion to have like a feel on how it changes or how uh, that I can bring out a bit more of the details with Arion. Um, so that's what I did here. That's the Arion image. Like, and I'm then saving this and um, turning it into an, changing the mode of it 
turning it into a um, Photoshop file and then placing all the other images uh, with alt as linked smart objects in there so that when we later uh, re-render the image that it will always like out update automatically so um, placing all the images in here you have to press alt otherwise it won't be um, a linked a smart object which means that you have to relink it manually afterwards um, this takes a while to put all the all of them in there um, okay just have to change the mode here real quick too much um, when we have when we are done with implementing them, okay, this takes a while now. Um, then I just made an action which actually loads, uh, which actually makes all of these like passes into one group, opens one of our standard files. Um, and in this file, I have like the layer set up for with which I of with which we work all the time actually. So I copy this or duplicate this into the other in the Photoshop file um, and then just place the passes into the help folder. Um, gonna drag them down to where they are supposed to be. I mean I have to see the here which is already set to lighten with null percent or zero percent um, the shadows I also have done here it's set to multiply also zero percent for the moment so that I then can change them later on the render layer we don't need the refraction we don't need also the refraction filter we don't need um, reflection indirect I will copy and reflection direct I don't have a setup for this, so I'm immediately turning it to 0% 2 and on turn it on screen, which is the setup for that you should use for the passes. Um, the same with the post. I guess here it's not really relevant, but I'm also copying that down, then turn it to screen again. As I said, the opacity filter um using always on the render folder that's the folder where all the passes and the raw image is in so as i don't have the see therefore i forgot to uh render the c c depth i use the opacity filter now which should be okay um i already have a mask on this as you saw before maybe there's already a mask so i just click alt to open the mask wait i'm just turning this off um to get inside the mask and I copied the um the multibus opacity in there. So if I turn down this then you see it's like similar to the alpha uh, to the alpha channel now. Um multibus object that we don't need this I just the material idea I usually keep um in in the help folder all the passes I don't use I, I keep up there um, as I said before I don't have lights in there so there are no light passes diffuse in the indirect I probably not gonna use the same with the direct diffuse uh, this is the denoise beauty I will just exchange this with the uh, raw image because it's a bit less noisy the AO I also have set up here it's also on multiply I've that's uh, these three like shadow C depth and AO dark and bright adjust. That's what I use or what we use in nearly each image. So that's why I set up the folders for the other passes. We don't use them all the time. So that's why I didn't have a folder set up for them. Um, yeah, ambient light I'm probably also not going to use. And this is the alpha channel, which is empty. Um, so yeah, that's how we basically set up a scene in the beginning um, I already made some another file before where I did this where I adjusted stuff a bit I will just show you 
Um, and I also made some masks already because this would otherwise maybe take too long and get a bit boring and it's like pretty basic knowledge, I guess. Um, here, as you can see, I used the post. I just, this one I really use very, very light, like maybe 5 to 10% on screen over the, this is not in the folder because if I, because it somehow makes the edges a bit blurrier, so the edges where the mask is wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be affected, so that's why I placed it outside of the folder render. Um, and then I used the reflection to make the bright areas a bit brighter. I will zoom in so that we see that a bit better. Um, the reflection indirect is affecting like the uh, bottom surfaces a bit. Um, I also added, like, added a bit more of shadow. This is the shadow map. I used it with 21% here, as you can see. I mean, like, this makes just the shadow areas a bit darker and brighter. Uh, C def, I also used a bit, like 15%. So, yeah, I mean, we can turn this up later. I just want it to be like the areas in the back, like the mountain to the right and back there a bit lighter. Um, the EO, I think I haven't used for now. Probably add this also a little bit so that we have a bit of more contrast in the image. Um, yeah, so I guess that's the basic setups for now. Um, yeah, or is there anything more to say? Ah, uh, yeah, the Arion, Arion thing. I usually, I mean, it, it's you have to be very careful with it. I think I usually use it between fifty and one hundred percent because mostly, uh, I think it adds too much of contrast to the image. But that you have to decide for each image on itself. Um, yeah, okay. So I think now, yeah, I, as I said before, I wanted to keep the, the whole render like pretty basic, like not a big deal on the textures and stuff because I wanted to do a bit more in Photoshop or like I think it's a bit more fluid if I do it in Photoshop than in uh, in Cinema 4D. So I hope uh, we will come up with something good. Um, yeah, so uh, I will switch back to Bridge to show you the images that I looked for on the internet where uh, that I I'm going to use. I hope this is enough or I hope that's uh, that are good images that I chose that we can work with. Um, I focused a lot on, I mean, I looked for like Mediterranean vegetation and of course like uh, cliffs and those things. I will just flick through them quite quick. Um, yeah, also checking out like these cliffs uh, with some vegetation that we maybe overlay or like totally overpaint our rocks with. Some splashes. Um, yeah, some more rocks. Or cliffs. Um, yeah, sea, beaches some desert images that I might use for the foreground and stuff, some more vegetation, yeah. I just put a lot of images in this folder so that I'm a bit, that I have a bit more to go back to and see what I can use and what I want to use. Um, Most of uh, all the images I have here are either w some I took myself or some I found on P 
px here now or px here uh, which is a site for um, how is it called like uh, with a li uh, license that you can use it for whatever you want basically most of the images they have on there I'm now just looking for one image that I want to use for the foreground I think is it this one Yeah, so that was all the images, I think. Mm. For the start, I think I want to... Yeah, let's let's do the foreground a bit, and I will go for an image with a bit of uh, vegetation. This is good. I will just drop them into Photoshop right now and see which one I can use. There was another one that I liked better, I think. Yeah, I think it was this one. Just dragging them into Photoshop now. I'm gonna switch to Photoshop. Um, so I also placed them as a link. No, as a smart object now only. I forgot to press Alt. Um, I will now put this in like the Staffage folder where it says foreground. Uh, blow them up a bit. And I guess I will go with that one for the foreground. I'm just checking now that the shadows, the shadows go, I mean, I checked this before that the light conditions are similar to the ones that we have in the render. Um, and here you can see the shadows are going at least in the same direction. Maybe they are a bit too short in the image, but I guess that's still somehow okay. Um, what I do then is like I just make a mask on this layer and first I will just like delete the part that I'm probably not using or that I don't want to use um, now I just make like a quick re I just use the brush tool uh, and brush in like areas that I think could be nice I want a bit of these bushes and stuff there we will redefine that a bit later just want to give the foreground a bit more detail um, you yeah, know I'm going to refine that a bit here what I use for this is like I have quite a lot of different brushes you can find them all over the internet actually I think I collect them for some years like from DeviantArt from wherever just search for Photoshop brushes and you will find actually a lot I guess um, relevant ones are like I really like these grass brushes that I use quite often or like these vegetation brushes that have like different types of grass and plants so it's quite they come in quite handy when you for example don't want to cut out this whole bush but just uh, have like wait, I'll just take a bit of an have like the singular grass or bush things there and don't have to cut out the whole thing um, here I guess I have to clean up the background a bit Also here is an other bush or like grass that I just want to add here. As you can see here now it 
already looks okay. I mean, if you would have known that there was uh, is some ground underneath, then it you might recognize it. But I guess later on, when we adjust the colors a bit, we won't really see that. I'm gonna do the same here now with the brush. Just going over it a bit. I'm gonna switch to a normal brush, I guess, for over here, um, where I just will go over like 30%. I switch to 30% now with the shortcut. You can do it with the numbers up there to switch between the different uh, opacities. Maybe we use even a bit more here. Oh, there's another blend, so maybe I'm just like already brushing this one in there. One I don't want. This stuff I could, of course, like do much more precise, but uh, I guess for the for this work session, uh, I don't want to go into that too m or into details too much. Just putting in the stone back there, so then with at least like a sharp edge. Okay, so now I will try to uh, adjust this a bit more to the basic render now, or to the colors of the rendering. For that, I now just uh, made a new layer, uh, and I'm gonna pick like a color from the ground, make it like the whole fill, make a clipping mask. Uh, I made it now with the shortcut, which is Control Alt G. I guess you can also do it via here. I think where now is release clipping mask. You can also s put make clipping mask, multiply it, and turn it down to I think like fifteen percent or something, so it gets a bit more of the color. Make it twenty percent. Then I just uh, add a hue and saturation thing. Um, Probably gonna turn down the saturation a bit. Now it's too red, so I'm gonna change the reds a bit more into the direction that we had. Maybe also turn it down a bit more. Um, I think it's now a bit too bright. Uh, using levels um, to adjust it. Um, in the help area, I also have like a reference for contrast check, which shows me, which turns on the black and white image. That's usually what I have turned on in the help. So I just turn on the turn on or off the help thing, the help top uh, folder. Um, now I'm gonna adjust the levels a bit. I think it's a bit too contrastful, maybe even a bit too bright. Less contrast, I guess. Um, let's check the color again. Mm, it's not perfect now, but well, I will just keep it like that for now. Maybe add a bit more of contrast later on when we work our way up a bit more. Um, so I guess as we are now in the foreground I probably also will work with the water now which is also like part in the lower part of the image for that I will just drop um, one image I'm just checking now which one I use for that
just tracked in like this wave wavy waves hitting like the coast or like this barrier here. I already made a selection for the water but I probably will make like now a new layer which I call water um, because I think I have to brush the waves over uh, over the stone so this selection won't work we'll just place it here so now I have the water selected I unlink it so now I can track the image that's in there without the mask um, there was this like hidden where the water hits the wall I guess I want this to go uh, up a bit on the stones so just like trying to find a good placement okay putting that here uh, then I will disable the mask with uh, shift and clicking on the mask so this will just disable the mask making a quick selection now of where this uh, splash and the waves somehow go maybe here we can also take these stones turning back on the masks and now we see maybe it's even bit too high it depends we here we don't have any restrictions I guess I will just uh, brush over this now with a normal brush paint where I want it here I just want it behind there so turning it back to 100% color white just brushing like really quickly over this here I don't know what this issue is. I have it like since today that when I brush masks, it shows like this really weird uh, mistakes. So if anyone has a clue, let me know where this comes from. So I guess here, like I know that there is the wave here, like hitting and also like making this. Uh, dusty or like this spray effect so I'm just using a brush with like 30% on the corners now to brush over it a little bit um, maybe also if we just adjust the reds of the coast we can even brush over this like make it like visible up here then okay, a bit too much now bit more this part has to be a bit more precise where it's behind the rock I guess we will later or we will now maybe brush over it anyway with a normal brush when we adjusted it a bit I'm just going to make the reds more into this greenish yellowish uh, color of the, of the stone we have so Turn it down to like in the reds, maybe the mast a bit less. Hmm. The sea could be. Uh, well, I 
will keep those for now, like it before we don't have a sky in there, I guess it's not really doesn't make sense to change the colors of the water here. Um yeah, I think I instantly want to no, make a new layer um and probably gonna use like a brush or something to add a bit more of the spray here uh, just have to see what looks good a bit smaller or maybe even in the whole area here oh. white I'm just now making it like really big so that I can see where I want to add more. Like over here. Maybe even here where it's like not very well. Where I can see a lot of the background. I'm just like now adding a bit more of this spray thing. Um, but I think this brush is not the perfect one for it. Let's just see. It's a bit of a trial and error I guess here to see what looks good or what doesn't look good. Maybe also changing the opacity a bit so that we have some parts where it's like already like fading a bit away or like disappearing a bit it's okay for now as I said I'm probably not gonna go into into details too much as it will just take a lot of time mm. I think now as we have a bit of the foreground I want to go to the sky and the background in a way um, so let's switch back to bridge or I mean, I'm now like I can show you like we have a lot of 2D references um, like sorted in our library here with like people like a lot of cut of people from different sources. Um, also, like uh, yeah, and that's the thing for plants for everything in the skies. Um, also, like different. Uh, different skies from everywhere um, I'm now choosing like a self-made one because I think there should be like clear skies at the coast somewhere and I just want like basically uh, a super clear sky for now oh I now know where this um, turning off the rendering the rendering is still running in the background the whole time so I'm just closing cinema for Dino um, Okay, now bridge fucked up or what? Okay, I'm switching back to Photoshop for now because I think bridge has an issue right now. Okay, yeah. I mean, we could for the background, for example, we could also just do like a gradient and then add like a bit of like uh, 
as it called like uh, noise or something over it but I guess I will just look for um, for an image in bridge that I can use so I'm going to our resources to the skies uh, slash cube self-made I have some clear skies here I think like skies are the easiest to photograph so basically if you take your camera all the time with you you can make photos all the time um, yeah here we have a clear sky maybe I want one that sets a bit of a gradient at least in there is this like yeah. yeah maybe just go with this we can adjust it anyway in photoshop then or like lay a gradient over it afterwards stretching it now a bit um, I guess I will now just drag and drop also the image from from here to get the colors out. Like as I said before, I'm um, I want to use this as a reference for the colors. So I'm just gonna open it, um, copy it into the screw things, uh, switching back to Photoshop. I uh, placed already the sky in there. Um, now I'm closing all the other stuff that we don't need anymore. Um, placing the image from here. I guess I don't have to put the website. I guess everybody knows who Mir is, who's watching the stream. Or maybe I'm just writing it down for a second so that we at least have the reference somewhere. I think mir.no is the website, so this image is done by Mir, one of the best, or the best in the industry, I guess. So I'm just using now the color picker. Um, I guess I will choose the left image as it's also like similar from the perspective uh, to take like this color of the sky. I'm using the Adobe color themes here. It comes in quite handy when you want to set up like at least the base colors for your image. So I'm gonna go select the color. I think this is like probably complementary. Yeah, so I have like at least these colors for the foreground and the background. Uh, making a new layer on top where I just use the brush like the sharp brush um, and copy in these colors so that I have them on top here so I picked now a color from the sky which is the middle color and the other colors are like coming from the complementary. It's just like a guide for me, oh, a guide for me what to use or in which way I want to go. Mostly I don't stick super hardcore to it. I mean we can also do now the same as like the pink is our main color in the image for the pink to see what comes out when we do this. Yeah using the same pink over here, also dragging it in here. Then we also get like some green tones, I think like maybe that's used here somewhere a little bit maybe or in the trees. Yeah, whatever. Mm, yeah, we'll also make like th add the two green tones and the pink here so that we also have a reference for that. Oh, I made this one twice. So, I maybe we'll also keep the image up here so that we have a reference that we can uh, put in. Let's make like this layer up there, which we call, I merge this now, I call it reference so that we can hide and unhide it quite fast. Um, 
so I guess for the sky I will try to I mean we could also as I said before just paste this here have like a clean sky and then overlay this a bit like make a soft overlay or like overlay and yeah maybe overlay is even better um, turning this now black and white will uh, just keep just make like the brightness on there so we have basically should have like a pretty similar color in some parts as the one in the middle like the blue in the middle what we also could do is like make here now a gr new layer uh, use a gradient uh, wait, I'm just doing it like this uh, pick the brighter color probably and make it like no, if I like that too much because you actually the sun's hitting from over here so maybe we should actually add it a bit here but not with 100% I guess make it a bit less could also do is add a bit of the dark part with the brush I mean we'll just do this with the brush I guess a uh, bit up here so turning it down to like probably like just a few percent so now we have like the for I think for now the sky is set up okay um, I also want to add a bit more detail in the background which I didn't do in I, I had some mountains in the background to add a bit of depth but then I took them out again in 3d because I thought it's like much easier uh, in Photoshop, I think I have an image where there are quite nice mountains for the background. Yeah, we'll just drag in this now. could even use this foreground back there okay wait let's no, let's just use the mountains for now uh, maybe let's stick out some trees um, just selecting this getting rid of this I mean yeah I shouldn't do it like this uh, I will just make a mask so that we can go back to it later on uh, invert this so I have the mask here right now um, just getting rid of the upper part they should be a bit dark uh, wait maybe actually wait. I didn't check where the lights coming from in this or like I think they are hit by light from the right now um the sh yeah so the light direction is correct yeah as you can see here now with the railings it's not perfect with the opacity filter the uh the alpha would have probably been a bit better to use now using some levers to make them a bit darker probably also going to color them in the dark or like maybe use multiply um, here just going to the fill uh, to get like the same color as the sky or like the color as the sky I mean that's also what they did in their image so I'm only copying here so. okay I'm just checking uh, what the people write oh yeah hey Luca thank you very much and everybody else I also hope that you enjoy it for now um, just doing my best here and uh, maybe we turn down the saturation a bit in the background image uh, actually 
thought it's like reducing the reddish color a bit, but uh, yeah, yeah. Let's keep it for like this. Uh, maybe we just copy the whole thing now because I think it could also be nice if something's happening up there. Maybe even a bit more. It's just like unrealistic. It's hard to say like what looks unrealistic, but actually there could be a mountain back there. Just turning this a bit, going down. Somehow want this to stick a bit above the building, I guess. Uh, let's get rid of this part here. Uh, just using again, like make sure that you're on the mask so you don't lose any image information. Yeah, we'll just make it stick out a bit more uh, if the blue, the fill layer here is not like it was so empty. And then I'm just going to brush down uh, this mountain here. I guess we will add some trees there in the background so this edge will won't be really visible in the foreground. Um, so... I think that's okay for the background now. Let's see, go back to the references in bridge and let's see what vegetation we have there. I think I have this tree line that I maybe could use for um, for the like trees totally in the back. Switching back to Photoshop. Um, I will just make the mask here because I think it's a bit more visible. I now choose like the, I don't know how it's called, the wonder stick I think it's called. Uh, w magic went tool. Uh, selecting the blue 65 is the standard uh, parameter. I think I usually stick to it. Maybe here I can go a bit higher because the other parts are mainly green, so I guess it should be okay for what I want. Uh, invert the mask. I think it's okay. Probably the edges are not are still a bit blue, but let's see when we drag this over into this here. Uh, because we have a blue sky anyway, so I guess it shouldn't be too much of an issue. I want some trees back there. I also added trees before in in uh, in cinema, but um, I wasn't too happy with it, and yeah, so that's why I now also do this here. I want them to be a bit smaller, I guess so that we still see like or maybe we can also put the silhouette of the of the mountain a bit higher later on maybe they should just start somewhere over here Back there, as you can see, there's already light, so there's no shadow on those trees. So, I mean, the whites are too white for me now. Let's just make it. I'm just organizing this a bit. Let's call this the sky. I actually have a folder ready for this. Let's just. This one is the sky with the image. So let's just drop this down here. Oh no, actually the image is up here. That's uh, there's the first mistake. Uh, this comes here. Oh yeah, so now there's a different color for the mountains. That's what I why it didn't work. That was why it didn't. That's why it didn't work before. Uh, can this a bit 
bit more, I guess. Just like 35 or something. Five. Um, so this group is the mountains background. So yeah, I can close this down. The background image I can delete and I make like a new group with control G is like the shortcut for making groups. Uh, I think I should mention more what I do on my keyboard so that you know what's going on. Um, so now call this tree <coughs> trees background. Um, I first probably gonna reduce uh, them. Like gap here probably is a good way to cut it. There is no other stems. Um, what you can do here to refine the mask is again like I have these brushes for uh, uh, for trees. I think this is one. Yeah. So there you have like at least uh, like the form of for tree. Uh, yeah. No, where this is not working right now. Ah no, sorry, see now I made a mistake. I deleted I didn't delete the mask but I deleted the um the thing the image. Okay, so yeah. Cut here somewhere. Now I'm gonna use this to brush back in some areas. There is now a stem coming out. I think I just like use the stomp tool with control uh, with S to brush over these stems here. Uh, and also the sky that I brushed in, just making like these stems, the white stems over here disappear. As it's so far away, I guess no one will really recognize uh, these mistakes. Or if there are mistakes, these mistakes. Um, now I'm going to turn back on the black and white layer to adjust. The or maybe, no, wait, let's first also copy like the blue in here. Uh, make it again with Control alt g uh, I, co I copied it with Alt. If you have Alt uh, selected, you can just copy a layer. Um, going to multiply. Oh, I now see that there's also some edge here, which I don't want. So I'm just going to c select the eraser and just go over it here with 100%. Um, Maybe this is a bit too much for this. I just want the brighter parts to take the color a bit, so turn it to 15%. I guess that's good. Um, yeah, now I'm turning on the black and white thing to adjust. Uh, I think it could be the bright parts are a bit too bright, I think. And a bit too much contrast for the background, I would say. Yeah, I think the whites are definitely too white. I don't know if I want to make the whole thing a bit darker, but no, I'm just reducing the white actually now. What we also could do is either we do it later or do it now. We could either feather this, uh, oh not that much, uh, 0.3 or something so that it's like a bit soft on the edges or just blur, uh, blur it later a bit so that it fades into the background a bit better. Um, so let's check how this looks in the image, turning off this. Somehow I don't like how they look that much right now. Maybe it's a bit too much actually. Maybe we have to take them down a bit more. I think the stems are a bit distracting. Maybe even, oh yeah, maybe we put an hue and saturation in there. Turn this down to whatever, minus 30. 
so they don't have that much color in the beginning and then turn this up a bit more but I still think they're too dark even if I know Now we can see a bit like the edge, we could refine that a bit more, but or just brush over it. That's another way you can do it, like just brush as we did before with this starting part. The leaves over the edges, but I guess no one will recognize that for now. Uh, I think I want a bit more of this thing in the background of the um of the hill in the background in the know which one this should be, you know, just this layer, layer 7. Probably also gonna brush over this here. Maybe we're also gonna add some of, or like just copy the trees and add them up there. I'm not sure if I just maybe what I could try is like make them like totally uh, like just in one color. I'm not sure if I or maybe not totally, but like seventy-five percent or something. So that they somehow disappear. I think the yeah, like something like this maybe. Same for the ones down there. Just turn this to normal so they will it will just be like an total area, make it a bit darker and then overlay it like whatever. Oh not this one. Hmm. It's too bright for me still. Yeah, I will keep this for now, I think otherwise I will spend too much time with these uh, trees and that's not really like probably necessary. Um, I don't know what we could do now is either add, yeah, let's add more trees so that we have a bit of foliage or like vegetation here. I'm just now going to go for uh, Go for some some vegetation. Gonna look in our resources to the uh, plants cut out. Um, cut out. No, wait. Sorry. Uh, Wish shopper. I think they. I have a Mediterranean bag from this shopper here. Yeah, so make that a bit bigger. I think we could use some of these uh, trees for the for uh, some of these like smaller bushes for the foreground. Uh, I'm also checking now for I mean the light conditions and most of them are not perfect for the direction we are working on. So I'm just choosing some that maybe could work, let's put it like this. Maybe also take some of the palm trees here. Oh, this one's nice. This one could work quite nice for our scene. Maybe also take like a dry one. Let's put in. So switching back to Photoshop, then just uh, opened all the files here. 
Um, no. I mean, I could also drop them as smart objects, but most of them had shadows, so uh, I guess I have to only use the the tree without the shadow. I'm now moving that to our vegetation folder that we have up here in the Stafash thing. So just placing all of them in there right now. Maybe with this one I also take the shadow because I probably will place this somewhere in the foreground. Um, I think the shadow was in the other direction. Yeah. Mm. I uh, flipped it horizontally. I have the shortcut F1 for that. I think there's usually no shortcut. It's on the edit and transform. So flip horizontal. So this one I can close. Just take over this one. I will also only use this. this I don't like it that much now that it's big but let's see this one I will also take with the shadow because the lights come in from behind right so that works quite good with the image or with the sun direction we have here um, yeah no, this last one I guess here we don't need the shadow so I'm just gonna put this here I'm now scaling down all of them a bit. Just like turning off this one. Um, yeah, dragging. I think where I want some, I think uh, this one I'm not using right now. Is this this maybe I could use somewhere in the foreground as it somehow fits there. It will now get a bit blurry, but I don't care about that. I should have scaled it after I uh, uh before I I after I placed it I should have scaled it. So the shadow and the tree is linked anyway. Uh this one pff, let's keep it up here as well. I guess I want some more trees behind this uh, rock up here, maybe not that big, but one we maybe could also use for the foreground we'll just drop this over here so that we have plants in the foreground over the one over the one we painted in before The good thing is now that they already get blurry, I don't have to blur them later on. Um, which I usually do with 0 0.5 or something with the Gaussian blur, otherwise usually the cutouts are a bit too sharp. Um. Oh, hello Yuri, and hello third images, also hello Volodu Volodymyr. Nice that you joined as well. 
Um, so I'm gonna hide this one here. I'm just gonna place this on top too. Uh, probably hiding all of them now. Turning on the um, the material ID. I think the rock. Yeah, let's just use this selection of the rock here for the mask of the background. Gonna make a layer here. Uh, invert it and then drag in the trees that I placed here. Which one? Oh, this is this one. I'm gonna put it over there. This one's the shadow one. That, that one I also don't need. This one, dropping it in here. So now having it in the back. Ground. Oh yeah, maybe there's one mistake. I'm just making this really quick now. Kay. As it's like the same texture all over as I mentioned before when I explained it really quick in, in cinema. Um, also gonna drop in this one. Uh, this one and this one I guess. Yeah, as you can see here, that was the mistakes I was mentioning before because of the displacement. If we don't change it, the texture, like try to find an image that we can paint over, we will probably just stomp over it, uh, stamp over it, maybe also stomp over it. Um, yeah, so here I think I have the selections for the materials already somewhere here because I also wanted to adjust them a bit. So that's in the render thing, like I have this uh, folder with adjustment for materials. Usually we don't do that too much, so that's why I just have like this small folder here. Uh, but here I now want to add later some dirt, I guess, and things like this. So now make this, this, uh, take this away from here, okay. Yeah, it's not perfect. I think the railing was not included there, so maybe just go like, this to mask that out. Yeah. This is always so all the things I do I do like really fast now and don't really take care of what's happening. Like the details I don't really care about right now. I think I want to use this tree, it looks quite nice a bit more often. I think this one I don't like too much. Maybe just make it really small somewhere here. Maybe even in the background. Yeah, this one is too blurry. I will take it away again. I'm just scaling them a bit. I think you can get away with it quite well if they are not like two super similar trees in the foreground. I will flip that one anyway because they are basically in the shadow, the ones back there. So I will make them, I try. will try to make the contrasts and anything go away anyway now. So, um, which this tree I really like. So maybe we're gonna copy that over there somewhere too. I think maybe if we have time I will add a bit more of like ground vegetation in the back part there but for now I'm just like pasting some some of the trees there Maybe this one here is anyway a bit too much in the foreground. Just gonna keep that, take that up there as well. Hmm. Somehow I don't really like the trees over there. I think they block too much of the image. Wait, I'm also gonna get rid of this one. This sucks there too. Maybe just use one or two behind the, the shadow I don't need. I 
I mean, I think that's the thing when you do the trees and those things in Photoshop. It's much faster to try it out. You can, what you could also do is like just place it like really fast in Photoshop and later on then do it in 3D, especially in the background. I think that's maybe the better way. But for foreground and stuff, I really like to use like 2D foli foliage, fo foliage, whatever. It's how it's pronounced. Um, yeah. So now I do the same thing again as I, wait, maybe let's track this down to the trees here, to the folder trees. I also gonna pick like this color from the sky now for this layer um, so that they multiply it so that they somehow get a bit of the color already. Like 15% usually is a good value. Uh, also add like a hue and saturation. Go on minus 30%. Oh, minus 30. Maybe that was a bit too much. Maybe minus 30. I learned this from Tudor, from the Panopticon, the multiply and the saturation thing, so thanks to him. Uh, and I just make a really quick mask for the pillars here. Or wait, I actually have that already, I think. Yeah, so just gonna erase that part here. Guess it's not a super clean mask, I guess. What? Yeah, I think some greenery back there would be nice. I'm just checking the the images I collected before, if there's something that we just could paste in there. I'm not switching to bridge right now because I will just like uh, try to find one image. So. Um. Yeah, maybe we use the same image that we used for the mountains in the background or like a similar one because it has some of the uh, some of the greenery there, I guess. Uh, did it open it right now? Somehow bridge is pretty slow when I'm using the live stream, I guess. I don't know. Ah, this one's not that nice. Something with a bit more green would be great. We try this one out. Ah, maybe even this one could be nice. Just trying to paste this in now, so... No, also I think... No, this has to go behind the water, so I'm just making a new layer for... Uh, cliffs, background... This in here... There's not that much sunlight hitting back there, so I think this image could work quite well there's also no sunlight. Maybe we also just reshape the mountain a bit. So yeah, we'll just make a quick mask now to see if that works or not. Yeah, whatever, this brush. Just going now over the pillars because we have the selection, so we can cut out those quite fast. Um, yeah, I'm 
just brushing a bit further and then we're gonna drag and drop uh, drag the the image there around there. So just taking this away from the mask, unlinking the mask, uh I can somehow maybe we can get away with this somehow. Copying this down here once more. Maybe even add like a bit more of the vegetation here. I will make this now to an I think a group would be better. Oh actually I already had a group. Uh just dragging the map um the mask up here, replacing this one, deleting this one. And now I can also drag these two images out. Um what I could use right now is like bring up or copy the shadow up here so if there are some shadows or if there's some light but there's basically only shadow back there so that doesn't really matter um, now it doesn't look that good at the moment I think I will try to mainly keep the the green parts like the bushes and stuff so just take away a bit of the yeah. so let's see what looks good here it here it looks a bit weird uh so I want to anyway I have to these two layers over each other now, so I have to get rid of uh one of them now, like to make them blend together a bit better mm, done. Just going to somewhere here, make a cut or something. Maybe that works. I mean, usually we, I guess we would need to brush in more of uh, of these stone textures so that that would work a bit better. Or maybe have adjusted like the one we used here a bit better. But. Just taking away you now some of this. Oh, here it's working quite nice. Maybe we'll take over here. Like so that some of the bushes pop out. So maybe um, let's see what happens when I brush away the other parts where there are no trees. I mean, I think I should adjust the reds a bit to the all over. Uh, greenish tone, so going into reds here maybe even take out the color a bit I think they're a bit much magenta, but I'm not sure and in the master I think I will also turn this a bit to red um, the only thing I don't like now is like here we could actually use a bit more and here it also looks a bit weird so just like here I will be precise uh, with the stones that are here wait maybe use a bit more what do we have here I 
I think for these uh, edges, uh, I, I'm now using the eraser because otherwise I always have to switch the brush and just change the black and white thing. Like uh, with D, I get black and white foreground color, black and background color white, and if I change it, the eraser will paint uh, white on the mask. So that's easier for now. Otherwise, I would always have to change the the brush and go back to the uh, to this bushy or tree like thing here. That's what I usually do if I brush like uh, or if I make masks for trees and stuff. Like use the eraser and the brush tool simultaneously in a way, just changing the background color and the foreground color. Maybe we can get rid of those trees back there now, in totally. But I think also the green, I will get rid of a bit more. Or maybe even turn the whole thing a bit, desaturate the whole thing a bit. And maybe also get rid of the trees in the background. Which ones were there? Or like make them look like really small there. In the And maybe a bit brighter, I think now they are they got a bit too dark actually. Turning down this Yeah, I think I want to get rid of this E three spec there. I don't like them at all. I think they somehow distract me too much, so take them out oh no, there's some other mistake. Oh we see you now the background image. Just brush over here. Yeah, I think now it's a bit more a bit better in the background. Maybe we could also add some of those like green bushes here in the foreground. Or maybe also get rid of some on the uh, some on the bottom where the water is. I think that's also looking a bit strange that the coast gets to the or like the water immediately goes into the trees. So let's just see what we can. the stamp to stamp tool yeah, I'm making this look really quick now but the edge would be need to be a bit more refined I guess I don't know. like blurry I'm making it like a bit uh, with an opacity so that it's not that sharp edge but yeah. it's not looking perfect but it's okay for now I guess yeah, we are also checking the contrast again oh off this layer turn it off I think it could be a bit brighter. Mm. No, it lost a bit too much of the contrast on trying to. Let's check. Yeah, now the color. The color is still a bit strange, I think. Maybe. Maybe 
maybe I'm gonna just brush over like a fake shadow thing, kind of like using something like this green bluish thing from here. And I will blur it now because uh, I use this strange brush, so let's go for a blur 5, so... Maybe it could also y need actually some darker parts there, or maybe the whole thing could even... Yeah, now it's getting... Yeah. It's starting to look better. Maybe here it was quite nice that at least like some light would hit this. Maybe also the top part, like, let's fake some light up there. Okay, now I think we should adjust the trees that are up here, like at the behind the building. Gonna, oh, I already made this up there, affecting the whole, all of the trees. Uh, maybe going a bit more on this. I, as it's like, I think it's only the same tree, I will just do this adjustment, not for each of them, but only for the whole group. Uh, because the values should be similar for each one. I think it's too, as it like not too much light hitting there, I will just uh, try to make them pretty similar in like bright and dark, er dark areas I think it could even be a bit darker a bit less of the white also could be darker here I think I will now just uh, reduce here a bit the mask with like 20% or something because this one actually would be standing in the light the ones in the back are in shadow actually what we could also do is like if we add two layers here um make them like 50 percent bright that's like then it won't affect uh, make them like fill the layer uh overlay it like copy the layer with control g this one i can delete uh make a Clipping, uh, not a clipping mask. Yeah, no, yeah, clipping mask. Um, and then on this one, we can use the uh, sorry, the burn tool, and the burn tool makes them a bit darker. So make the ones in the back a bit darker. Switch to the dodge tool, add it on the new layer, and just like add some bit of highlights there. So. Yeah, the color, maybe we can, I will just adjust it here right now, a bit. Mm, I think we should bring a bit more detail to the foreground still, like maybe add some. Oh yeah, maybe wait, I will do this separately, I will just give them, this is here, the desaturation, just drop down these layers to this layer here or to the group with the trees up there because the other ones shouldn't be affected from this I guess just delete them here because this one now got really red so that I didn't like that maybe let one part come in here somewhere maybe here so there's already some kind of shadow on the ground so I don't have to take care of the shadow it's the easy way out Make it behind the stone, adding this on the mask, inverting the mask. Uh, yeah, I think we can, here you can also, like, if you use a bit of a feather, it's just not that sharp, which is quite nice on the, on the corner of the, or on the, like, where, oh, I don't know how it is, on the edge, or where the cut actually appears. Um... 
I think I will just use this tree now to edit some on some more parts so that we have at least some details around here. Maybe stretch it a bit so that it doesn't look like totally similar uh, to the to the first one. Why is it not working? <coughs> Even make it a bit smaller, I think. Yeah, here you can see now the grass and stuff that I added before in 3D. I mean, it's adding a bit of difference to the whole thing, so that's quite nice, but I didn't really take that too much in consideration or really didn't look at it for too long. I mean we could also have pro uh, added like brushes and stuff in, in 3D but as I said for those who joined later I wanted to do most of the stuff just in, in 2D uh, because I think it's a bit more interesting to follow or at least I hope it is a bit more interesting to follow. Um, I will just check really quick on the on the images I collected if I find another one for some other parts of the foreground. Maybe we can use some more images instead of like a uh, single single trees or just cut off trees. Oh yeah, this one maybe. Maybe this one. Going on the plants layer, pasting this in there, turning off the mask. Oh yeah, this is quite big, so actually I think we could use those bushes to maybe just I'm just brushing now on some parts where I could think that bushes or like some vegetation would be nice. Okay, here we have only stone, that's not good. Yeah, I don't know what this fuck is here, like, it's so strange. Yeah, so here we can see now if we probably later adjust the reds a bit and then just gonna... Maybe I will just try to go for the whole foreground with... Not for the whole foreground, but for the closer foreground with this one. Maybe not. I'm just changing between with X between the foreground and the background color actually so that I either uh, brush or delete stuff from the mask. Maybe something maybe up here it could be nice if we have like more of these plants I think what I will do right now is just like s use the stamp tool and go wild this bush could be nice over here Maybe we have to scale it later or something, I will see. This part could be also nice up here. Okay, I think I have to brush once more with this mask where we have this like weird thing here.
Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think I cannot get rid of this white spot here now. Uh. I think it's something. Um, I don't know. It's always appearing when I'm doing masking. When I have too many of the masks, it's always coming, and that's like really fucked me up. I mean, here we could also use. I mean, now using always only this brush, I could also use more use more something like this to have a bit more of like nicer ends and I think now we'll just for now as a, I don't think I need to do this so precisely so I'll just try to loosen up the edges a bit and then uh, or soften up the edges a bit. Okay, here I think we need to make the image a bit smaller, otherwise it looks gorgeous. Let's see if that works when we try to adjust the colors a bit if that fits okay to what we where we painted it. And definitely have to take out the reds. Probably even change them a bit to this like greenish thing. Yellows probably also going a bit more into the greens, also like taking away a bit. Mm, here I think, uh, because I think in the foreground we have still a bit of shadow is going on, so maybe just like copy the shadow pass that I wanted to, what I wanted to do before on here and multiply it. What result do we get with this? Hmm. It changes the image, a I mean the shadow or the bright parts a bit, maybe we just like do this like by hand now, here they could be brighter, I mean in general it's a bit too bright now, if oh no actually it fits quite well, I think we just have to adjust the color a bit, and here in the foreground it just looks a bit strange, so I'm gonna get rid of that part here. I mean, maybe I'm trying now because this uh, the rocks are just one material. Uh, I'm just trying to select them and add like a rock texture here over them too, so that the foreground. Just going for the red is the red rock texture. Just selecting this one. Um, going back to the I will do this now at the adjustment material so that it's in the background. Going for rock looking again in the folder I think I have some okay rocks there or rock textures there I will just try it with this one right now because I don't want to spend too much time now looking around for the perfect the perfect texture or the perfect thing, so ah, well this doesn't work very good. Well, maybe 
maybe we just keep the rocks like that and I'm now maybe just giving them a bit more of a I'm generally just taking the red color here, placing it in here. I think with multiply it should give it a bit more color. Maybe even make them a bit, give them a bit more contrast or something. Just bring in the black and white values. But they are, I don't know, like they, for me, they seem a bit too, uh, too like green. That's just disturbing me a bit, so I guess, um, or maybe a bit too blue. I'm just checking. Or maybe just give them even, like this with the color balance and give them a bit more red here. I think that's okay for the surroundings now. What I want to do now a bit is... I think the first image, the foreground we added, now it looks like a bit like super flat. Maybe I'm just gonna uh, give it a bit more contrast again because I think we turned down the contrast too much on this one here. It's getting a bit too dark. And this is still a bit too red, so that's only I want to get rid of that a bit more. I don't understand why it's like so reddish. Just gonna take away all of the reds now, but I think it's more than much chance. There's a strange magenta tone in, too, in there too. Maybe even the blues a bit. I'm going to the yellows and... Yeah. It's still red, I don't understand why it appears so red, but it's weird. Maybe also use a color balance, color balance here. Adding a bit of yellow. Greens here. Yeah, now it's starting to look a bit better. I think like before I will just brush in like a fake, not a fake shadow, but add a bit more darkness or like a darker area up there. Uh, because it's, I think it should be darker there. Going, turning it a bit more into blue so that it's looking better. <laughs> but still, I think I will even add a bit more here. Just brushing with black now uh, over this. Uh, now I switch to the normal brush tool so that it looks like this is going a bit under this part. Just reducing it like to probably like few. Yeah, that looks better now, I would say. Um, yeah, I think I will now leave it with the surroundings and go as we are already like two hours in, which is quite a long time, and I'm happy that still so many people are watching. Um, I will now just add, I guess, a bit more texture to the building, like adding some noises or some dirt to the parts and I but I will do this now really quick and I think I will just leave out like we could still add some people up there at the terrace or something but I think around two hours is enough to watch for everybody so I will just add some more texture to the uh, to the building and then I guess I will leave you for your uh after noon or let you enjoy your afternoon 
Um, so the rock. So I already made the selections before. Uh, these are the, the, the window, the the frames of the windows. I think there maybe I just paste over one uh, so one uh, one texture that adds a bit of dirt, but if I'm just checking if they could be a bit darker. Or even no, I think a bit br uh, darker is nice so that it gets the building like it's. It doesn't have that much depth, so I think like adding at least there a bit of difference between the uh, arcades and the uh, and the win and the frames is quite nice. Oh, I just see I haven't selected the windows, but I'll just get the where is it? The refraction filter should be the windows. I'm just copying that for the mask. There's also the water that I had in there on it but that we will just get rid of that so just add a new layer make a mask without a click on it adding the opacity filter and then just getting rid of the of the water down here so now I have the selection for the windows too I think they could be as I just as I said before I just added basically a blue RGB color as the ref or as the visible environment. I used an HDRI but I didn't want the HDRI to be reflective in the windows so I just put like a blue uh, RGB color as a visible in my a blue uh, sphere as an a visible environment, so I think now it maybe in the windows looks a bit too less reflective, so I'm probably just gonna add some the sun comes from this direction, so I'm going with white, maybe just add a bit of uh um of a reflection in there, maybe also over here, oh yeah down here there won't be reflection of the sun. And then reduce this to like it should just be like a bit visible, I guess. Maybe the color of the windows could also go now a bit more in the direction of the sky. Yes, it's here. It's a bit more like a reddish, uh, reddish blue. Not so much cyan. So I'm just probably gonna give the hue from the sky and reduce that because it's too bright. Or hmm, maybe even. <laughs> Maybe give it a bit more darkness now. Well, this actually doesn't look too good, so maybe I just stick with the. Maybe just. Maybe I will make it uh, darker and just take out like twenty percent of it, like of the levels here and here a bit. Or maybe just that in but with like just like five percent or something yeah it's okay um now going okay the windows pink I will just drag in I don't even know what I want to drag in there I'm probably just looking for um for some some kind of dirt texture, I don't really care what it is at the moment. So maybe something that adds just a bit of uh, of like uh, texture, a bit more texture to this um, to these frames. But yeah, so it's they are so have such more of an area so just want to have it a bit more like not that totally clear thing I think that will look a bit better um, I think I will just multiply that over there and reduce it to 30% maybe that was a bit too less let's see yeah so now we can see we don't have like totally we have some darker parts and some brighter parts I think or 25 is enough otherwise it will be too visible and or too much um, yeah I think the railing okay it's a 
railing it we don't really see we could just make it maybe a bit darker as well uh, but I think I think I will keep the railing as it is it doesn't as it doesn't make too much of a difference um and now I will just add a bit more texture. I'm just using whatever like this here, maybe for the uh, for the concrete or for the pink. I don't know what texture it should be, concrete or plaster or whatever. Uh, I separated like the right and the left and the bottom parts a bit already before, so I'm gonna track this in now on the right part, so we can see it's now only visible. On the on the on the areas facing to the right or facing to the sun at the moment, just like probably I will just make this uh, even smaller right now. Just getting out a bit. Just copying this now over here and probably also over here. Just the same thing for the for the speed or for the so that like down here. Maybe just stretch it a bit. Just gonna these two together. Uh, Control E is like the shortcut to merge two layers or more layers, whatever, like two layers or more layers. Again, I think you can try out what works best, but I think if you have white parts in it, it the multiply just uh, multiplies the black parts on it. So just like really make this again. I mean, uh, with this you have to be really careful, I think, because um, if it's too much, it just looks it looks worse than it did before. So I think um, twenty percent should be fine. Um, maybe what we also could do is just like, okay, maybe not my, right. I'm making this like the pass through again, like 100%. This is like the dirt. And multiply this one now, because then I think uh, maybe we can also brush in like some at some spots where we want to have like a bit more dirt and stuff uh, we can just brush over or maybe even do that in the not in the right layer but in the whole mask of the thing mm, choosing something i think we can actually go with a similar brush that we used for the waves or something that's like not really uh super edgy and just go for like maybe here I turn it down to 30% now to add some more like you can I know you can easily do this like edges with dirt or something in in in, in 3d but here it's a bit I mean here you can just make it like where you want or see the effect of it immediately this is not very like I don't do this like very nicely now because I think it will take too much time if I brush in like too much details but just to have like an idea like where 
uh, dark spots would be uh, well like there would be probably would be a bit more dirt or something like this uh, I will turn this down now to like go with soft light and make this like really really subtle I guess and even delete now some of the parts and let's say here that it's not like totally till erase it with like thirty percent just go over it somewhere maybe turn it on a bit more so we will just have like a bit of difference here um, here it's like super dark still now I guess I will just take the dirt map from here go on the left one um, and just flip it horizon horizontally just gonna paste that over here and here again oh shit um, just gonna paste it up here yeah I think here I don't even want to do it like over the whole thing Let's go for just erase this part here. We could also just stomp like merge these layers, also look at these layers and stomp this part from over here to some spots over here. Okay, don't have uh, maybe this is not part of the selection. Oh yeah, I didn't select this, so let's just leave that for the like it is. Just brush it down here. Can turn it on multiply. Maybe go in the dark spots for a bit more than in the bright areas. Yeah. I think if you I think I will I will just stop somewhere around here may with the adjustments now maybe just do a bit more of like the color adjustments maybe the pink is now also a bit too I'm just pulling up the references I think the pink could have a bit or the yeah the pink parts could have a bit more of uh, contrast still, so I'm just going to the walls, pink, probably make them a bit darker. Oh. And adding some more highlights. I think there's also like some kind of a bit of yellowish thing in there, which I don't like too much. I want to have that a bit more white, just reducing the yellow here. Um do I need to adjust the color? I think I will now just adjust the colors in like the f what I usually do first is like just make one uh layer um control alt shift n for a new layer is the shortcut for a new layer just add like a totally black layer, use the brush and I hope the it doesn't crash right now because that's also an issue with the huge brush when uh, with the huge eraser that it crashes from time to time now and just make like a bit of a vignette just go to soft light uh, turn it probably to like 15 uh, maybe 20 percent Maybe even a bit more. Let's see what looks good. I think the foreground could have a bit more of the vignette. Um, we'll just use a mask and go up erase it in the upper part a bit. Oh, that was too much, I think. Um, yeah, so it's just a quick vignette. Maybe even more contrast for the whole image as I think it's a 
bit dark in the foreground especially not in the where the building is but okay maybe we can get rid of the of the contrasts on the building what does this change hmm. yeah let's get rid of the contrast so I edit here and maybe even take out a bit of the white from the building um adding more contrast here maybe also the dark parts could get uh, slightly darker like really just a slight darker but i i still don't like these trees back there i think they still look weird i will just check if it looks better without them oh sorry that was the wrong layer yeah i think i will just get rid of them and here I think that's a mistake back there, just brush over that. Mm. Yeah, so back to the final adjustments, closing down all this. Um so now I adjusted a bit of the contrast and now we'll just use the, I don't know what this thing is called, the selective color thing. I will just blend another image that we have up here. I think the sky, for example, oh let's go with the reds, let's see what's affecting the reds. The reds may be a bit too dark actually. Maybe we could use less yellow and we'll just take out the yellow bit i have to mention I, my screen currently is not calibrated because uh, i forgot the calibrator in the office so i hope the colors come out somewhere close to nice so here i think it's a bit too much green now i want this the yellow parts a bit more red and a bit more yellow I think greens probably won't have too much effect oh yeah, it the seons I think should be less red Maybe it's even a bit too bright in the right corner. I'm gonna get rid of that bit. Ah, probably that's coming from this actually, yeah. I think I should turn down this image we added before a bit. back to the selective color the blues I think the blues could also lose a bit of the magenta going a bit more into uh, cyan and yellow maybe even make them a bit darker mm, yeah, it's a bit too much yellow let's keep the yellow at zero the cyan and lower it a bit at like uh, 10 we bring back a bit of the magenta. Magenta, is this is that value usually doesn't change too much. I mean, here we have a bit of magenta in the in the pink building. So we can now make this maybe it's mainly the bark dark part, so maybe make them even a bit darker. Uh, what we could also add, no, what I see now is like at the pillars down there, maybe uh, brush there a bit of like dirt in there. I think it looks like a bit strange that they're so clean at the ground. again with 
probably uh, maybe here I just use normal and turn it down a bit here maybe even add another layer and now go like on the bottom to add a bit more and like turning it down to like probably 10% back to selective color now we only have the whites maybe we could go the whites a bit more so it adds a bit more detail in especially like the brighter parts that in the front for example here on this like lit areas I think this we can basically the mid levels could maybe be a bit brighter but we can keep it pretty close to what they are yeah also the dark areas maybe just one or not even one I think I would just keep it like it is I mean it's probably not oh yes we still have these trees so I Yes, these things are still a bit distracting. I will just take them out now. Uh, this and where's the other one? Uh, here you can see it's quite ha coming I ca coming in quite handy if you have like at least a layer structure that or a folder structure that you work with all the time. So I can quite fast find this tree. What I don't like currently is the foreground. I think it could still be a bit darker or a bit more have a bit more contrast, I don't know. So that we have at least a bit more some more depth or something in it. I'll just turn off the layer. Now making this really quick, just brushing over like this front areas here. Maybe also the trees up there are a bit too um, too dark for now, so I'm probably gonna bring that, make them a bit brighter, bring in a bit more of the white, and I think they could get a bit bluer actually, like now they are pretty red, so I don't know if I like that that much. Maybe even add like the. Oh, I now see that there's also like some selection error that I have to find later. Yeah, whatever. It's not visible here, okay. Um, I think also now the. This is too much, the vignette, I will turn that down a bit, turning off the references. Mm, what you could also do if you really want to check like what the AI does for you is like check what happens when you automate the image, uh, add the image, auto turn, auto contrast and auto color. The auto color usually messes things up a bit, but it's sometimes quite nice if you just add the uh, the contrast or the auto tone, which sometimes adds a bit more. You see, it didn't change the image much more, but it added a bit of more of contrast here. So it just happens when auto tune, yeah, maybe adjusts the colors a bit. So I'm not checking if there were any. Ah, I'm just checking the questions of you guys. What you wrote? Okay, uh, Florian. Yeah, I will. I recorded it, or maybe even on YouTube, it's recorded automatically. Um, so yeah, it will be possible to watch the first part or like the stuff you missed. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed what I did. I will just make this and make it even like uh, 
now like this so you can see the image a bit bigger um, yeah so I guess that's it from my that's it from my part um, if you have any questions right now or later on feel free to shoot us a question I think possibly whatever wherever like you can either contact me directly at Facebook or write us on uh, on Instagram a direct message and we will be happy to answer any questions uh, I hope you enjoyed it uh, if you did let us know if you want us to continue with stuff like this also let us know uh, maybe we can do it like once a month or once a week or something like this maybe even a bit faster with more 3d with stuff before or something like this so yeah thank you again for watching and yeah hit us up with whatever you want to know or whatever inputs you have so thank you again.